Number 21. In a downhill ski race, surprisingly little advantage is gained by getting a running start. This is because the initial kinetic energy is small compared with the gain in gravitational potential energy on even small hills. To demonstrate this, find the final speed uh, and the time taken for a skier who skis 70 meters along a 30 degree slope, uh, neglecting friction. Okay, so letter A is going to be starting from rest. All right, so let's write down. So we got a little picture over here, right? Going to ski 70 meters. Um, it's a 30 degree slope. And uh, in this particular case, the velocity initially will be uh, zero. So uh, there's a couple of ways we can approach this problem, but let's approach it from an energy perspective. All right, since there's no friction, it says uh, neglecting friction, right? Um, remember that now, so this is for letter A. Remember that the initial energies will be equal to the final energies, okay? So there's two major um, energy values right in this problem. We have both kinetic because there's motion and potential because there's a height. So I know that the kinetic energy initially plus the potential energy due to gravity initially should be equal to the kinetic energy at the final point plus the potential energy at the final point. So let's just uh, try to now uh, expand on these a little bit, right, by thinking about what the kinetic energy is equal to and the potential energy is equal to. So the initial kinetic energy can be rewritten as one half mvi squared plus then the potential energy is mghi for the initial height will equal then one half mvf squared plus mghf okay notice all the terms have mass in them right so i can factor them out and just cancel them all right so now let's think about the initial uh, kinetic energy what did they tell me the initial velocity was for part A or of the skier? They said it was zero. So what happens to the whole first term? The whole first term cancels out. So basically the only thing I'm left with is the potential energy, right? So potential energy is G, which is, let me just leave it as G, uh, times then the height. Well, did they give us the height of the person? They didn't, right? But don't fret. They didn't give us the height, but can you find the height? Can you find this height? Well, think about what you know, that the skier traveled 70 meters, right? And that's this distance here in yellow. The angle's 30. How do you find this side of the triangle, right? It's simple. Co uh, not cosine, <laughs> sine, right? You know the hypotenuse, you know this angle, you're looking for the side opposite, therefore it's sine, right? So sine of theta will be equal to opposite over hypotenuse, okay? So then the sine of 30, all right, will be equal to the height over, right, 70, okay? And then just to find the height, just cross multiply, right? So height is really going to be uh, 70, right, times the sine of 30, okay? And I'm just gonna plug that in for the height here, all right? So we'll do, um, so actually, you know what? Let me, just, let me just leave it in terms of hi for now. Just remember that the initial height is this value. I'll plug it all in later, okay? All right, so we found that. Um, then, uh, so now we're going, we're looking for the final velocity, right? That's essentially what they're tr uh, asking us for, right? They want to know the final speed, and therefore that will come about from the final velocity. So our unknown here is the VF. Great, that's squared. And then plus now, um, what is the final potential energy? Well, the person eventually reaches the ground, right? So what's their height now? Zero, right, it's zero. So what happens to that whole term? Cancels, all right, so simply erase this. And now this is our formula. Remember, we need to find the final value. So let's just do a little algebra now. So we can simply divide this right side by two, excuse me, divide it by half or multiply it by two, right? It really doesn't matter, they're both the same. And then you'll get G times the initial height all over one half. And that will equal then the final velocity squared. And then what do you have to do? You got to take the square root of both sides, right? So let's take the square root of both sides and I'm just going to erase this square. Excuse me, actually, I'm going to erase this square and then just simply add the square root there, right? So that would be the final equation, right? And now all we have to do is plug in. So it's going to be G, so square root of 9.80 multiplied by the initial height, which we found over here right, was 70 times
times the sine of 30. Great, all divided by then the one half. Okay, so sorry about the little bit at the bottom there, but the final velocity will simply be, let's plug it into the calculator, so square root of 9.8 times 70 times the sine of 30, all right, all divided by 0.5. We get a value of about 26.2, okay, 20, 26.2, and that's meters per second, all right? And now, um, they also asked us to find the time. Okay, so this shouldn't be a, a big deal. Um, we definitely have some acceleration, right, going on in the problem. Um, and what we need to do is we need to somehow find the time. So you gotta think back to kinematics now, all right? Um, so I'm thinking about using, I'm just actually thinking about where to put it for right now in terms of, space on the page. Okay, so let's put it on the upper left, right? So we need to find um, the time, right? It takes uh, to go this 70 meters. So we think back to kinematics, right? I'm thinking about this particular formula. Now you could do this in a bunch of ways, but this is the one I'm thinking of, that the displacement is equal to uh, one half, right? Times the initial velocity plus the final velocity, all multiplied by time, okay? So now, uh, considering this, this assumes constant acceleration, right? Uh, which we do have in this case, uh, because they're, yeah, yeah, because we're not really uh, taking it, with, gravity is acting, there's no friction, there's no air resistance, nothing like that. So the uh, distance, right, or the displacement that the skier traveled uh, is in this direction, right? And it's 70 meters, so this value is 70. That equals then one half times the initial velocity, which was zero, plus the final velocity of 26.2, all multiplied then by t. All right, so simply just divide this side out uh, by 26.2, 26.2 times 0.5, so 13.1. So divide this side by 13.1. Okay, divide this side by 13.1. Great, that whole thing cancels, and now we're left with the time being 70 divided by that value. So it works out to be 5.34 seconds. So 5.34 seconds. All right, that would be the time. Okay, now technically that's, yes, technically that's not part B, now that I just realized. So let me just erase that. This is still part A. It's just the second part of part A. All right, so this is still part A. Okay, now let's move on to part B. So now we're going to be starting with an initial speed of 2.5 meters per second. So it's essentially going to be the same thing, right? Very similar to part A, all right? The only difference now is going to be the initial speed changes, so we'll ha this term will not cancel, all right? So I'm not going to go through the whole derivation here. It's going to be literally exactly the same. I'm just going to jump down to this step, okay? So it's going to be one half, uh, remember the mass canceled, okay? Times now the initial velocity of 2.5 meters per second squared, uh, plus then, right, MGA. Actually, you know what, let me not plug anything in yet. All right, let me just solve for the final velocity first. I'm just gonna rewrite everything. So there's gonna be the initial velocity squared plus G times HI will equal one half times MVF, so, excuse me, times one half uh, VF squared and then the whole second term still cancels because at the end, right, the skier is at the bottom of the hill. So simply divide out now the one half, right? Divide this whole side by one half. Okay, divide that side by one half, and then you'll take the square root, okay? So we'll have one half vi squared plus ghi all over one half will equal vf squared. Remember, just take the square root of both sides and then you'll get rid of that square. So this is the final formula, okay? So now I can just plug some, some stuff in, right? So we've got square root of one half times the initial velocity, which they now told us was 2.5, okay, meters per second, that's squared, plus 9.8, I know I'm running out of space, times, right? The initial height, which we still is 70 sine of 30, right, times 70, so actually, you know what? Hold on one second, guys, let me just, I can just erase this. There, more room, it's like magic. So then plus uh, 9.8 uh, times then, right, 70 sine of 30, OK? 
Okay, extend that. All divided by, this whole thing divided by one half. And remember this whole thing equals the final velocity. Okay, so therefore the final velocity now, just plug it into the calculator. So square root of 0.5 times 2.5 squared plus 9.8 times 70 times the sine of 30. All right, that whole thing divided by 0.5. So this works out now to be 26.25, right? I really, I mean, the problem here is, uh, in terms of significant figures, I have to, um, you know, I have to round to two, but if I round to, t excuse me, I have to round to three, but if I round to three sig figs, you know, I'm gonna get exactly the same answer as I did before. So I'm gonna extend this a little bit to 26.25, uh, okay? So that would be um, the final uh, velocity here. So you're already noticing, right, that it really doesn't make that big of a difference at all. And now, if I were to have to uh, solve for the time, okay, so let me now do that. So now let me solve for the time. I'm going to do the second part of part B at the top here. All right, same formula as before. Displacement equals one half times the initial velocity plus the final velocity times time. All right, so the displacement here is still 70. One half. Now the initial velocity change, right, is 2.5. The final velocity is slightly greater of uh, 26.25 times the time. And then I can simply divide out that side, right? I, didn't even, I could have probably cut it at 3 sig figs since I'm adding the 2.5. But it, it doesn't matter. It'll change it so s slightly. 2.5 uh, plus 26.25. Okay, we get a value there of 14.37 or so. So divide this whole side uh, by about 14. Wait, 14 point, uh, let's do 38. And divide this side by 14.38. And we'll get our time value now to be 70 divided by that answer. So it works out to be about 4.87, right? So 4.87. And that's in terms of seconds, right? So as we can see now, if we compare, you know, the two times, just by starting out a little faster, I mean, we should expect the time to be faster, but it's not significantly, right? I mean, we're talking about what is this five tenths of a second in terms of the difference, right? Or so. So it's really not that big, but in a competitive race, it definitely will make a difference. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe and I will see you in the next question. Have a great day.